Hey, what's up adjusters? In this episode of Live Xactimate Training, I'm gonna walk you through a water loss that initially wasn't even thought to be a water, or initially wasn't thought to be what it actually was. I'm gonna walk you through um, everything that it takes to build this semi-complicated water loss. Now I say semi-complicated because it's a water loss that's probably gonna come out to somewhere between 10 and $15,000 in the end. Um, but it has, I guess, more than just some simple drywall repair. So it's not the simplest water loss that you're ever gonna find, but um, it's certainly not the most complicated. So before we get started, if you're watching this video, if you aren't a member of our Claims Adjuster Success Network, if you do the Facebook thing, go check it out. This is it right here. Go jump on, let's see if I have to duck down, jump on and go search for the private group, the Claims Adjuster Success Network and apply to be a member. As long as you're an adjuster and you're not into bullying or giving bad advice and you enjoy uplifting your fellow adjusters, join our success network. We'd, I'd really love to have you. We'd all really love to have you. So jump on there. And as always, make sure that you are a subscriber to this channel. You're watching right now. Click on the subscribe button so you can catch not only all of these live trainings, but also the other fantastic content that me and my company, Adjuster University, comes out with. So without further ado, let's get started here. This room that we're looking at, this is the room that was claimed in the FNOL, the first notice of loss. When I received the, uh, this assignment, they said that there was water damage in the bathroom due to a roof leak. So I get out there, open mind, um, this is it. Now, what I don't have a picture of, is right in the center of this, a uh, pretty small bathroom is a skylight. It's one of those skylights with like, you know, four, it's like four feet up. There's like a four foot wall. Now I don't have really a picture of the skylight. I should have put that in. That's my fault. But this is the overviews of the actual bathroom. And now this is the water damage. You can almost see the uh, skylight on the left corner there. But this is it. So obviously, I mean, this is a single story house here. Um, so you got the skylight right there. So the insured said that, yeah, we got a roof leak. We got to get, we got to get this figured out. So I said, okay, we got some moisture in the wall. We got moisture in the wall all the way uh, behind the tile here. Okay. And that tile extends continuously into the uh, nearby shower stall. Okay. All right. Now there's our sketch. Now let me just dial it back because as always, um, when you're working with some companies, you know, they'll tell you that they want you to inspect every room. And it's, it, it's true, I mean, it's good advice and also inefficient advice. You really don't need to inspect every room, but you should make it a habit of making sure you're inspecting at least all of the surrounding rooms. Now, if you remember in that last photo, there was, um, I had my moisture meter against that wall. So doing so many claims, I already know that I'm gonna check out whatever room's on the other side of this for some extra damage. So I'm gonna take you through the photos now and take you through my mind while I'm going through them. So this is the front of the house. We always take that picture. Okay, oop, that's a bad one. Okay, so um, first thing is first, I wanna go in the attic and see what's going on in the attic. Now, I don't always go in the attic on roof claims, especially if it's an obvious wind damage claim. But this one was a little different. There wasn't any obvious wind, there wasn't any wind in the area, no wind reported, and I had easy access into the attic, so I wanted to check it out. So in the attic, I found right above that area, so you, you see this uh, insulation going vertically right there, that's that, that's that um, well for the skylight. And right there is a pipe. So, and if you look around, there's no other water damage coming in from a, um, you know, from, from a roof leak or anything like that. So um, I, I checked it out. Um, I checked it out and the pipe itself was pretty wet. So it looked like we had a pipe leak. So I told the insurer, go get a plumber out there and we should be good. Okay, so now, taking us through every uh, all of the rooms. Now I've already, before I took my photographs, I already went through and got a lay of the land to figure out what, um, you know, what rooms I'll be accounting for in my photos. So here is the living room. So I checked out the living room and at this corner here, right at this corner, you can see there's some light staining down the wall. All right, leading into that nearby kitchen and right here, right near where the kitchen is, there's some obvious water damage. So I got my moisture meter on there and it's definitely wet. And here's a laminate floor. 
Uh, the laminate floor has some obvious uh, delamination to it. All right, so that floor extends throughout the living room, okay? So, here we go. This is the kitchen. Why am I taking pictures of the kitchen? Because we, have, we still have some water damage to the ceiling here, okay? There's still elevated levels of moisture inside that wall right next to the cabinet, all right? And it goes right near this laminated countertop. So, laminated countertop, water, it's going to delaminate. So we check for that. And we can see right here, we have some delamination to the countertop, okay? So I made sure I got measurements of the uh, countertops before I left. Now, this is the hallway right here. Why am I taking pictures of the hallway? Well, that hallway has that same laminate flooring, and same old laminate flooring continuing throughout it, okay? And of course, here are the photos of our uh, bathroom. We're good there. So. Now, first thing is first, now that you understand what we're dealing with, we're gonna go through and, oh, and by the way, this picture here, blurry overview picture. This is a rookie move performed by me, somebody who's been doing this a long time. I always keep a very close eye of my camera when I take pictures because if I see it came out blurry, I take another one. Usually in low light situations, you may get a blurry picture. And honestly, I didn't notice that this one was blurry. So that is a mistake but thankfully it isn't uh, what I would call the money shot. It isn't a very, very important picture. So um, it just kind of shows what room I'm in, but you know what room I'm in in this one. So we'll probably get away with it. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, now it's time to drop these photos into our photo report and get them all labeled. So let's get started. Done. Okay, now to move to our sketch. I always like, um, this is actually something I recently started trying to do more often, and that is to take photographs of my sketch. Um, usually I would do that if I know that there's a possibility of the claim being denied, uh, but I'm not sure. I don't want to build the sketch in Xactimate if the claim is just ultimately going to be denied, but I don't want to throw my field sketch away if uh, I find out later that the claim isn't denied, that it's actually going to be covered, and then I got to either go back there or just try to figure it out from the photos. It's never any good. So I've been taking photographs not only for that purpose, but also because it is a little bit easier for me to transcribe my sketch uh, digitally that when it's on the same screen onto Xactimate. Sometimes I'm writing estimates in an airplane or somewhere else where I'm in tight quarters or I'm in a packed coffee shop, and it's just, it's a little bit harder. So let's get started. Now that we have that finished, let's move on to the actual estimate. So let's get started. So what I did not do before I started building this estimate was drop in our six-figure macro. Obviously, if you're watching this video, you're seeing the ads, the six-figure macro, this is the thing to use. If you are adjusting claims, whether you're a daily adjuster, whether you're a cat adjuster, whatever the case is, it is absurd to me if you are not using, if not this particular macro, something that you spent hours critiquing, putting together that's going to help you close, help you build your estimates much faster. Most new adjusters, spend, I don't care what certification level you have with Xactimate, I don't care what course you took online. If you don't have your, if you don't have your estimate structured in a nice way, your estimates look like crap. If you don't have all the line items that you think you're gonna need within reach and you're cherry picking line items out of a database of thousands and thousands, you're going to spend an unnecessary amount of time putting those together. If you're on a cat, if you're in a cat situation, if you're on a hail deployment, hell, if you're on a water, like a snow damage deployment, the amount of time, extra time that you're gonna spend putting your line items together, if you extrapolate that over four claims, at that point, if you can find a way to just make, get through the estimating portion of your day faster, you have the possibility of shoving in an extra estimate that day. If you can do an extra inspection and an extra estimate that day, that's going to increase how much you make on your deployment or your daily claims by $200 to potentially $800. And that's just up, upping one single claim. And if you do that, if you can get, let's say $400 
a day extra and you're doing that seven days a week, how even five days a week, what does that come out to? It's absurd not to be using whatever you possibly can to make your estimates get completed faster. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this sketch. All right, control C. I'm gonna go to project, copy from project, and now I'm gonna dump my six figure macro in. It's gonna do some magic, do some magic. Now here we go. Now I'm gonna back, go back to my sketch. I'm gonna get rid of the exterior. I don't need that. I'm gonna get rid of the second floor. Don't need that. There is no basement. Get rid of that. Boom. Drop my sketch in. All right, now I got this little annotation. Move that over. People like when you do this. Companies like when you drop in little annotations here and there. Um, I always hated doing it because it was, I hate dealing with the arrows. I hate dealing with the text inside of Xactimate, but it's already there. Just drag it over. All right, now I'm only dealing with coverage A, so I'm gonna get rid of coverage B. All right, that's it. Here we go. So now jump over to our estimate item. Get rid of the folders we don't need because we don't have any coverage C, personal property, no exterior damage, get rid of that. Now, as always, we make sure that our photos are the same flow as our um, estimate. So there we go here. Now we're looking good. Now here's what, um, take you back, might not have gone through it together. So I don't have any uh, photos that specifically say dining room. It just kind of, it's really not a dining, it's like a kitchen net, like a eat-in area. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take you back into sketch. I'm just gonna make my dining room actually a sub room of the kitchen. There we go. That way there's no confusion. Hey, do you have pictures of the dining room? No, because there is no dining room. It's just one big kitchen. All right, so we have our living room, kitchen, hallway, bathroom. Boom, boom, boom. Save, because I don't trust exactly me. Now, let's get started. I always like, when I'm doing my estimate, I always like to start in the most severely affected room. And the reason why I like is because although uh, this macro has all of the most commonly used line items, regardless of what macro you're using, if you have those line items that you're gonna be using the most, going in the most severely affected room first will allow you to get rid of the ones that don't apply to this specific one and possibly use those line items that you're using in that room and other rooms. So it just removes some seconds of time that you would spend deleting things. So. I think about what's the most severely affected room. Well, these rooms are all a little bit different. I am going to go with the uh, kitchen. We're gonna go with the kitchen because the kitchen also has countertops. All right, let's go. So we could go to our kitchen folder. We're gonna highlight all of those line items. Now, um, there really is not much uh, content manipulation that we're gonna need to worry about here. So I'm gonna get rid of that. There are some drapes on the wall. Actually, there are drapes on the wall. Boom. All right, we will give them 100 square feet to mask and cover. Um, actually, we'll give them more. We'll give uh, about 300 square feet to cover up those cabinets. See, I already have the line item in there for that. Now we're gonna remove that fr refrigerator out of the cove. The range is right there. Um, now, if you see the range, there is um, tile, it's a tile black backsplash around it. So I really don't need to move that because I'm not painting around there. Same goes for, you know, the dishwasher. Now, I'm going to be replacing the countertops. So I will need to manipulate that sink. Oh, I'm looking right at it. There we go, boom, we got it. Now let's take a look at this line item. Now this line item, uh, excludes any additional materials or hardware. Labor costs to disconnect a single bowl sink and faucet from supply lines, P-trap, and detach, move to an adjacent. So that's the only line item we need. So we'll get rid of all this. We're not gonna manipulate the countertops. We're gonna actually replace them. Okay, so insulation. We will give an allowance for insulation, eight square feet. Much that's a, a, a much larger allowance than what we can visibly see in the photos. Now I'm going to switch this to material only. Now for the sake of this instructional video, this could be a little bit confusing. So usually whenever you're do, going to do a material only line item, you need to pair that with a labor only minimum charge on there. Now I'm not going to put a labor only minimum charge in this particular room because I always like to start off the very first material only line item with that charge. If it's going to, if in other words, if I'm going to have 
material only line items in multiple rooms, whatever the first room that I use that in, that's the room that I'm gonna drop that labor minimum charge. And I'm gonna be doing that in the living room. So I'm not gonna do that at this moment. And likewise for the drywall. Actually, to be honest, we probably don't need material uh, labor minimum for drywall because we're gonna have a fair amount of drywall, I believe. So we'll just switch that to eight and on the wall, We'll, we'll call it 60, oh, just in the living room, 32. Okay, then we're gonna mask the floor because we're gonna be painting a lot. 32 plus eight is the new drywall that we're gonna seal. We're gonna paint the walls and the ceiling and we're gonna do that at a P at the end because we're gonna do two colors. All right, and that's all we need there. We're not gonna do anything on the floor. Doors and windows are okay. Vanity cabinetry section. Now we are going to be replacing this post-form plastic laminate. When you know you're gonna be doing something with cabinets or countertops, it's good to get your measurements in the field, not only for the accuracy behind it, but because the time it will take you to do those measurements in the field, you will ultimately save by doing it the other way, which is the eyeball way. Actually, let me correct that. So this comes out to 53 linear feet. That's not right because I calculated by square foot. So I'm gonna get these multiplied by two, multiplied by three out there you go 25 25 that's what we want get rid of the rest of these line items now one thing that was in the macro and i guess i just spoke over since we're going to be painting the ceiling we're going to need to mask these light fixtures so i'm going to mask a light mask large light there we go. So this is our kitchen right here. We're repairing the wall, we're repairing the ceiling, we're painting everything. Um, oh, and there's a uh, little drape. I see a drape in that back window there and three blinds. So what we'll do, we're gonna add a drape and then we're gonna detach and reset three blinds. Move that up to the... Also, one last thing, let's do something else here. We've got uh, moisture uh, right in the wall next to that cabinet. So let's also throw in an, al an allowance in there to, to detach and reset some cabinets. What we'll do, we'll just detach and reset the entire uh, row. So detach, upper cabinet, there we go. Now, how long is that row? Well, we have it in our reference block here. We'll get rid of that number one. I don't know how that showed up. 9-2, where'd it go? Right here, we drop 9-2 in there. 500 bucks. That's a big difference there, $500. Do they need to remove all nine feet of those cabinets? Maybe not, but they've got nine feet. If it gets rejected by my file reviewer or by the carrier, I mean, okay, we could talk about it. It's $500 going in their pocket and that's gonna help any differences that may occur between us and like a contractor. We have those line items. I'm gonna cop copy all those line items, okay? Now the living room, damage wise, very similar as far as the, the ceiling and walls go. So I'm just gonna dump all those line items in and we're gonna just work from there for drapes. Do we have drapes? We have one, two drapes. Now there is a blind right there, but that blind is cased inside of a little well. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna worry about that, but I am gonna detach and reset those two drapes, get rid of the blinds. We're not gonna do anything with the cabinets. I'll give them a hundred square feet. Actually, I won't protect any contents because we're gonna be moving all the contents out of that room for the flooring. So we'll need to drop in our content manipulation line item there. So cont manip what I normally put. I'll look at the furniture in there. We got big couches and we know we're gonna, we're gonna need to really move stuff around. It's not like just paint. I'll give them three hours. That's pretty good. Okay, so no light fixtures on the walls or the ceilings, so we can get rid of that. We're gonna leave, we're gonna give them another eight square feet on the ceiling of repair and then another 32 on the wall. So we'll keep that as is. We're still gonna mask the floor. Some companies don't want you to mask the floor if you're replacing the floor. This one don't, don't care, so we leave it in there. All right, we got our, our ceiling, we got our paint. Get rid of these line items. Now we need to worry about the floor. We need to get the line items that we need for the floor. So what I look at here for the floor is right here. Is there just a baseboard or is there a baseboard and a shoe? If there's a baseboard and a shoe, then we're just gonna remove and replace the shoe. We're not gonna detach and reset it, probably in a break. We're gonna seal and paint. Now, if you're paying attention right now, I'm back in the macro and I'm just gonna cherry pick the line items I need out of it. Now watch this. So I'm gonna mask the perimeter of the floor for that, remove and replace the, the base shoe, seal and paint the quarter, you know, the, the quarter round. I'm also gonna paint the baseboard that go along that goes along with it flooring system holding the control to control button down i'm going to get that floor system divider and then if i go long enough here's the laminate floor boom i'm going to get the vapor barrier i'm going to get the replacement of it all right so the next thing i'm going to do worry about that baseboard is continuous with door casings so there's one door in the room uh there's two doors in the room an interior door and an exterior door so i'm going to account for that i'm going to get that category 
I'm gonna mask around the perimeter of those openings, mask around that casing, and I'm just gonna paint the casing. Copy those line items, and inside of our living room, I'm gonna dump them in. So just like that, everything is already where it should be. Calculate it by PF, PF, PF for the perimeter of the floor, and then laminate, F, 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 and then the door opening 17 times two, 17 times two, 17 times two. Some companies will want you to use a microbial when there's water damage like that. Some will allow you to use the tear out line items which give more of an allowance um, because the materials are wet while others don't let you do that. Uh, this particular one doesn't let me do that so I can't do it. So that's everything we need for the uh, living room. Now I'm going to take all these line items again, copy them because the hallway, we're not doing anything in that hallway except replacing that floor. So all I need to do from here is just dump it in. We're not going to be doing anything with uh, drapery or content manipulation. We're not going to be repairing the walls. The only thing we're doing in here is actually that base shoe. So I'm going to leave those line items just as they are. I'm going to leave the floor system line items just as they are. And then I'm going to, but I am going to recalculate the casings based on how many actual openings there are, which there are five. So 17 times five, 17. Now, before I go on any further, just want to also reiterate, sometimes when I'm doing this, I talk over the, I, I talk so much and I don't pay attention to what I'm actually deleting. One thing that we do need is T-molding. T-molding is like a, what's placed in between a transition between one type of flooring and another. Now there is T-molding in these rooms at every door. So I'm going to do two and a half times five here. Now in the kitchen, there was T-molding as well. And that T-molding was right between the opening uh, from where the cabinets are, or from where the kitchen is to the living room. Uh, we measured that as 5-5. Five, five. So we'll dump that in there. 5-5. Five, five. Last but very not least, now it's time to go into our bathroom. I'm going to jump in the kitchen. I'm going to use these line items. Real here's what I'm seeing here. We're going to be given some allowances on the ceiling. We're going to be given some allowances, a lot more allowances on the wall because we are also, I'm going to replace all of that tile. I'm not going to assume that any of that can be matched and blended or, or, or anything like that. This is going to be a little bit more extensive. No blinds. I'm not going to be doing anything with that vanity that's in there. That can all stay. So I'm going to get rid of all these particular prep line items. The one line item that I will use for prep is to detach shower door, shower door system, not just a slab. There we go. That is $104. I know there is a corner unit, okay? Here, shower door system corner unit. That's what we want. And that is 190, so there you go. We're gonna use that. Other than that, um, you know, there's a little miscellaneous in there that could be manipulated. Um, even the toilet that's right here, does it really need to come out? Not really. Um, I'll put it in there anyway, though. Anyway, though, just to, just to cover all my bases, give them a couple extra bucks. Now, if there's no light fixtures to mask in this room. It's just a uh, recess, so I'm not gonna mask anything there. For the ceiling, I'd say, I'd give them about half. I'll give them about half the ceiling. Still only comes out to just less than 35 square feet. Same goes for the drywall. Now for the walls, I'm just gonna give 32 square feet of drywall. Now I'm gonna pair that with half inch cement board, okay? Now that cement board is what is going to be behind all that tile. So how do we calculate all this tile? We can jump back to our sketch, get rid of this number one. We have this measured three eight by three nine. I want three eight for this wall plus three nine times almost the full height of the wall, seven five. Three eight, three nine, seven five. Three eight, three nine times seven five. See what I did there? So this whole corner unit, we're saying it's 55, just over 55 square feet. Now let's go over to where the tub is. 511, two six, and it's three and a half up plus 511.26 times 3.5. Now we're at just shy of 85 square feet. So now that we have the what's behind the tile, we will look for ceramic tile. Put that in with an identical number, 8447. Now we look for extra things that we can add to it. See the tile that's around the perimeter of everything? That's a bull nose. We can add extra for that. And also, the this little strip right here, this little fancy schmancy strip, we can add that in. We can also add in, where did it go? This little knee wall, what's called a knee wall right there. So we'll throw in about 12 extra square feet there. Plus 12, plus 12, there we go. Now let's look at bullnose, make sure it's two inches by six, that's what we want. 
Then we're just gonna do that, the perimeter of everything. You see it, it goes around the entire thing here. So we're gonna do three, three and a half, plus two, six, plus 511, plus it would be seven and a half minus three and a half. So four plus three, eight, plus three, nine, plus seven and a half. I don't expect you to be following me with all those numbers. They're just stuck in my head. I just, if you had to do it, you just calculate in your head, write it down the linear feet based on all of that. I'm gonna do basic for that feature strip. It looks like it goes all around as well. So I'm gonna do the same thing there, except I'm going to not include one calculation. And that's that four because it's not actually there. Three, eight, three, nine. I basically just use the same calculation. The only difference is I made sure it was the horizontal calculations only, no vertical. Now we're gonna think about the new drywall. That's half the ceiling. So in parentheses, I'm gonna put C divided by half plus all the new drywall, just the new drywall, which is 32. We're gonna give them 32. So because we put uh, reference blocks in our sketch to deduct where the tile is, I don't need to worry about reworking my numbers for the paint. So we'll just leave it as is, WC, ceilings and walls get that out now one thing i will do also we're going to detach and reset the tub faucet right there and there should be also another tub faucet shower faucet right there detach tub shower faucet put that in set it at two that's a 500 dollars increase we got that in there now another thing see these little shelves we want with the tile coming down those shelves are going to be coming out too now there's not really a great uh, line item to use that so what I will use is a high grade soap dish, three of them. And I'm gonna put that, yeah, I'll keep that right where it is. I will also put seal tile wall, seal grout on tile wall. Because everything is in a wet area, I'm gonna make sure that the new tile is sealed. 96, 47. So we do a glance over, make sure that we are looking good. Now some people, uh, if you encounter a contractor, public adjuster, they'll also, you know, Make sure you include all the detach and resetting of like the, the, the towel and the, the ring and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's very easy to do that and a lot of insurance carriers or file reviewers will reject that because it's, they just feel it's unnecessary and I to a certain extent agree with them. Unless of course I'm writing an estimate for a contractor, then I throw in everything I possibly can. That's just kind of what you do. So because of the extent of this damage, I'm gonna be adding in a 10 and 10 overhead and profit on there. Now, some of the rules that I have to follow with this particular client, I can't apply overhead and profit to certain line items. I know what those line items are, what categories those line items are, because I have that included in my final checklist that is a part of this macro. So I know not to apply overhead and profit on any roofing, fencing, cleaning, or demo. The only trade I'm gonna have out of those is demo. So I'm just gonna click here, get the line item, click on this button right here, that opens up this, and I can switch that one line item to non-OMP. Now with that being said, I'm gonna get rid of all of the remaining line items that were a part of the uh, six-figure macro, and that's gonna be it. Now from here, the only things that I have to do, apply depreciation, uh, I'm gonna reprice the estimate because I'm using the macro. I'm gonna apply depreciation, do a final check, and then I'm just gonna move on to my final report and get whatever other documents I need. Guys, that's gonna be the conclusion. This one was a long one. That's the conclusion to this uh, Xactimate live training. That's the conclusion of this episode. I hope you guys check out the rest of our live trainings and make sure that you're a subscriber to this channel so you can see all the new ones that we put out as well as all the other stuff that we come out with from Adjusted University. I'll catch you on the next one.